Hey everyone, I'm Olivia Flanagan, your gender affirming voice teacher, and today I'm going to talk about vocal registers. I'm going to explain what they are, how your vocal folds function differently in each one, and show you how to recognize their unique sound qualities. Learning about vocal registers can be really helpful when you're working on vocal feminization because it can give you a better understanding of how your vocal folds function in different pitch ranges and help you achieve different sound qualities. First, let's talk about how our vocal sound is produced. Air passes through our vocal folds, which are two bands of tissue housed in our larynx, and that creates a vibration. That vibration becomes a buzz sound that is sent through our vocal tract and is filtered to become the sound that we eventually hear. Our vocal tract includes our larynx, which is the cartilage structure that houses our vocal folds, our pharynx or throat, our tongue, our soft palate, nasal cavity, and lips. In order to change pitch, our vocal folds are lengthened or shortened, and they vibrate in different positions. These different positions create unique sound qualities within certain pitch ranges that we call registers. There are four registers of the voice that all people, no matter what sex they were assigned at birth, have the ability to access. There's a lot of differing opinions on vocal registers and a lot of different terminology that different teachers use. So I'm gonna do my best to include a lot of those different words that you may have heard before. Vocal fry is the lowest of the four registers and it sounds like this. Uh... By adding a little bit of airflow to shortened, loose vocal folds, you get air bubbles that pop through the vocal folds. Vocal fry is often heard in speech at the ends of phrases. You might have already heard me using it in this video, but it sounds like, hey, how are you? What's going on? The end of the phrase. Vocal fry can also be used in therapeutic contexts because of how relaxed your vocal folds are and the light compression that you're getting. Vocal fry is not harmful to your voice, but if you're hearing too much of it in your speech, it could mean that you need to work on breath management. Next is the modal register, which is where we speak. You might have heard this described as the chest voice or the TA dominant voice, because in this register, the fibroarytenoid muscles, TA, are responsible for causing the vocal folds to be short and thick. In this register, the vocal folds come into complete contact with each other as they vibrate. Because of the size and shape of the vocal folds and because there's so much contact as they vibrate, this register can feel strong and comfortable and you might feel more sympathetic vibrations in your chest. As you go up in pitch in the modal register, your vocal folds will stretch and get thinner so that less surface area is in contact as they vibrate. There's a physical limit to how high you can go in this position, so eventually your vocal folds will flip over into a new vibratory pattern in order to continue rising in pitch. You'll probably feel a flip or a click in your voice as you change over to the next register, which is called falsetto. In falsetto, the cricothyroid muscle stretch the vocal folds long, the vocalis muscle is relaxed, and just the edges of the vocal folds vibrate together. Some people call this register CT dominant because of the cricothyroid muscles, and some might call it head voice. In this register, the sound quality can be hollow, flute-like, breathy, and you might notice that you feel a little bit weaker or like you're not able to control the volume quite as much as you do in the modal register. The highest register is the whistle register. We get a bright, thin vocal quality when just a portion of the vocal folds vibrate together and leaving a portion open. You've probably heard singers like Mariah Carey or Ariana Grande sing super high notes in this register, so check that out. There are general pitch ranges where most people feel these shifts in register, but the exact note is going to vary from person to person. You'll probably notice that there's some overlap in your 
voice, that there are notes that you can hit both in the modal register and in falsetto. So there's probably an area of your voice where you feel a little shaky. Should this be modal? Should this be falsetto? And that just takes some practice to navigate because as we know, we're actually shifting the way our vocal folds are vibrating. So that takes time. Mixed voice is a term that a lot of singing teachers use to describe some combination of registers. So that's a possibility for you too. If you're just getting to know your vocal registers, you can play around with low, middle, and high notes and just notice how they feel. So I can try uh, uh, feel a little bit different in my body. You can also try to just glide from a low note all the way to a high note and back down. So you can record yourself, listen back, see if you hear any of that flip or feel any of that flip or click in your voice. Um, notice the sensations and notice if it takes different amount of effort to get to different parts of your voice. I hope this video was helpful in learning more about vocal registers. Let me know how it's going for you down in the comments if you have any questions and let me know if there are other topics that you'd like me to cover in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.